Tackle today, Justice Brothers from Tackle Trading, bringing you all the charts, the news, the analysis in just a few minutes so you can make informed trading decisions. An experienced trader looks at the market action and it really smells like digestion. You can learn to read charts and be able to understand what is occurring in markets by mastering technical analysis. We have a master trader class that gets you oh, a gigantic leap towards that mat uh, next week. Uh, great class to start that uh, foundation of technical analysis, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. If you're interested in uh, signing up for uh, Master Trader next uh, uh, Monday and Tuesday, just hit the link in the description and uh, become a pro member. And it is free to attend for all pro members. So hopefully we see you there. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. And it does feel like digestion. I mean, this is just classic. You take a big surge and then you do something like, you know, sometimes that's a high base, sometimes that's a shallow pullback, sometimes the deeper pullback. Very common technical situation. That's exactly what it feels like is occurring right now. Yeah, I like the way you put that digesting, right? You see that initial surge uh, after uh, Trump's victory last week, the market just up, 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 up. You start to see the early signs of slowing momentum as it comes into that $600 level. And, you know, in the newsletter this past weekend and what we've been talking about with our community is secondary patterns waiting on those secondary patterns because as you get a little bit overextended you do get into secondary pattern watch and whether it's a high base which does feel like a little bit of high base here or whether it's some some degree of pullback scenario flag versus retracement a lot of times what occurs in these mo moments is you look at that 9 EMA, that's that pink line on, on the chart here. You look at that 9 EMA, and a lot of times the market will digest going through a little bit of consolidation as that 9 EMA does catch up. That's typically high base type analysis, which would put you on the uh, on watch for the breakout of that $600 level. Outside of that, you could still see a little bit of a pullback, but it does look benign here. Uh, looks like a little bit of consolidation in front of uh, a larger move. Yeah, I mean, not a lot to point on other charts, you know, small caps, you know, RSP kind of just doing a different version, right? I mean, this is like, it never ex looks exactly the same, but what's going on is the same in my view. Yeah, it's it's just a little bit more volatile uh, is how I would describe it. When you're looking at the SPY, that's the collection of the 500 biggest stocks in the market, right? When you're looking at IWM, that's a collection of 2,000 small and mid cap stocks. They 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 have a tendency to move a little bit more aggressive, and so yeah, you're seeing a little bit more volatility. But at the end of the day. I, I want to describe the overall environment different if you're looking at IWM, RSP, SPY, or or even the diamonds themselves, the Dow Jones. The only difference I would see um, is, is the NASDAQ, but that's more from a sector perspective, XLK kind of hesitating in, an, in a multiple time frame breakout, but the Qs itself just looks like consolidation, very similar to what we're seeing in the market itself. So in the indexes, no, you're not seeing a, a, a broad, move in the indexes they're all kind of running on the same gasoline still sectors are a little bit different we're seeing separation on the sector side uh but from an index side uh we're just seeing consolidation at the top end of charts yeah listen uh cpi came out today and it was about as boring of a report as you ever get uh i mean misses beats you know these are the type of things that can change narratives when you come in line to the tenth of a percent on every major aspect of a CPI report. I can't remember that ever happening, Matt, like as far as them all. They always like something beats or misses a little bit, but this was straight chalk today. Yeah, you got core, then you got CPI, and then you got the year over year numbers. And every single aspect of that report came in line here today 0.3 on the core, 0.2 on CPI, and 2.6 on the year over year numbers. And so, not a lot to update here on the actual market itself. The, the concern on the CPI report was basically if the dollar breaks on a hot CPI report, would we see more selling pressure in the commodities? Would we see a little bit of, of the patterns break on the indexes themselves? But you haven't seen anything like that after the CPI report. A little bit of fading action on, on the dollar as it's coming into those very important resistance levels. You're in the zone on the dollar in, in between 106 and 107. That is a major level of resistance. And if you're looking at the market and you're saying, 
all right, high base, let's see if we can get something cooking above 600. Or if you're looking at the commodity side of the equation and saying, all right, let's get a support build at, uh, on gold at 2,600 after that uh, fairly aggressive sell-off on the daily chart, you, you definitely want to see that dollar start to show a little bit of weakness here. We haven't seen it. It's still the continuation of the upward movement of price. Despite the inline report here today, you're seeing that continuation. Now you're coming into the top levels of that resistance level. And so it's going to be very important. It's, 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 it's hard for me to see. And this is a complicated analysis, but it's hard for me to see the S&P break out. I don't know what you're about to say, but I know I'm going to agree with it. It, well, it's 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 hard for me to see the current market breaking out and running with the dollar breaking this level of resistance. And so you're you're definitely looking at the combination yeah, of the market. And because even if you have certain areas do well, because, you know, oh, the yeah, dollar yeah, breaks out. Absolutely. It, there would be enough in the market way down to create the market itself from well, uh, doing. Much. For example, for example, let, let me just give you an example. All the indexes are looking fairly good right now, right? Mm -hmm. All of them. Okay. And they're all kind of running on the same gasoline right now. Correct. Correct. Okay. But if the dollar breaks out, wouldn't you start to have a little bit of concern on the mega cap side of the equation as they do a tremendous amount of business outside the United States versus on the small and the mid cap side of the equation that do less business with uh with with international uh international affairs and whatnot and so yeah mark i i i do think it would impact the if the dollar breaks out i do believe it would impact the overall landscape but it doesn't mean it would end the trend if that makes sense and so yeah, it, it's just a concern and there's certain concerns in the market for example if the dollar breaks out you're, you're most likely going to see a continuation of the sell-off in, in commodities. And I think more importantly than anything, it's that point. Because ever since the election, the dollar has been running hot and commodities have been running weak. And, and they've been running basically divergent against the dollar right now. And so it's more important when you're looking at those the, the commodity landscape and you're looking at gold saying, all right, is this selling pressure in gold? a buying opportunity. Well, if it is, the dollar is going to hold that resistance level because if the dollar doesn't hold that resistance level, you're most likely talking about a further pullback in gold and, and the same thing would uh, could be applied on silver. The same thing could be applied on, on copper as well. A little bit more with that Chinese analysis on the copper side, but the point remains. What we are seeing post-election is a divergent relationship between the dollar and commodities. And as long as that dollar is going to go up, we're most likely going to see the continue, uh, continued selling pressure on the commodity side. But Mark, what have we seen on the dollar multiple times, though? We have seen this before. And over the course of the last couple of years, we've had a couple parabolic uh, trends coming into that level. And that level has ultimately held and came right back down. And so it's going to be really important to see how this resistance level forms on the dollar and how it impacts specifically the commodity space. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, uh, let's get to individual stock in the news. Uh, you know, a couple other commodity charts I want to look at. But in the midst of the macro, right? In the midst of the macro, there's always the micro. Uh, what do you got for us today? Yeah, Apple's in the news a little bit here today. As uh, Evercore analyst, uh, I th forget his name, Darinami, I believe, uh, named uh, Apple a top 25 pick with the potential for AI-driven iPhone sales and growth coming out of Apple. And so they named uh, Evercore named Apple a top pick going into 2025. Now, from a technical perspective on Apple, you're going to have to see a break through some of this consolidation at the top end of that chart uh, for, for that uh, projection out of Evercore to be accurate. But uh, I do think you'll start to see a little bit more of that type of news coming into the market as we start getting into to later November, obviously heading into December, those top picks heading into 2025. 
Well, guess what, Mark? We have our top picks going into 2025. It's called the Tackle 25. We'll be releasing a new list in later December. So pro members and tackle trading and at large, get excited for that new uh, Tackle 25 list coming in December. Moving on, let's talk a couple a uh, couple earnings reports here today. Let's go through Oxy very quickly. Warren Buffett's company, and that's how we categorize Occidental here, but Warren Buffett's company, Oxy, they reported EPS of one dollar. They it, it was an expectation of eighty cents. That beat by twenty percent. Revenue was three percent down year over year. They did officially provide guidance. That guidance was reaffirmed at a little bit of the lower end of the range. And so a miss on revenue, a little bit of guidance concern. Not good. Not good enough report to really kind of pick it up from the low point. Going to need to see a little bit of development as that is a. Uh, a, a nasty violation if it does confirm here today trying to uh trying to come back up uh today is oxy we'll see if they can come through that by the end of the day and then you had an interesting company come out today rocket labs here uh came out and just powered through on their appropriate earnings. to the moon type candle oh man rocket to the moon no doubt about that they posted a loss here today but the loss was better than what was expected. Revenue was up 55% year over year, and they reaffirmed, excuse me, they did not reaffirm guidance. They increased forward-looking guidance. And so a, a decent uh, beat on the revenue, in a loss on the EPS, a decent beat on revenue, but a guidance uh, that obviously is the market is just saying, all right, baby, let's go, 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 go. Rocket is on a rocket to the moon. It blasted through absolutely everything. And obviously, when you blast it through everything, you're going to be looking at secondary patterns. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, I got a little bit of dry powder for commodities, Matt. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm playing a lot of Trump trade. I'm playing a lot of stuff where the charts tell me to play. It's a very nice credit environment for that. But I got some dry powder. It's going to be hard. Yeah, well, I, I'm selling neck and puts on Bitto. <laughs> well, not right now because that candle. <laughs> but uh, like, I need the dollar to break to get involved. I, I, I'm having a hard time doing anything new in commodities until I see mm -hmm. that dollar break. Uh, you know. Well, I, I think it, that's it, a good anchor, though. But like, I mean, when you're looking at silver here, silver's uh, selling. It's broken through every degree of short-term moving average. Uh, copper here had a break of that consolidation on the top side after the election has done nothing but show increasing volatility. Uh, when you're looking at the uh, gold side, we already did a little bit, but you're seeing a very similar sell off that we're seeing on silver. We're, what we saw on silver, gold and copper all had different trends going into the election. All have performed identically after the election. Regardless of the trend before the election, regardless of the pattern before the election, they were doing different things. Now they're doing the same thing. What does that tell you? It tells you that it's 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 trading divergent against the dollar. I'm right there with you. I see the commodity side of the equation. And obviously, anytime you get a sell-off on the commodity side, you're going to get your interest peak. There's no doubt about that. And, and, and rightly so. But you got to be patient in my estimation here because that dollar is a concern there's no doubt about that and so as the dollar is navigating that ultimate resistance level i i just think it it, it pays to be a little bit patient here to allow some degree of development a change of characteristics on the dollar because right now you don't want to fight the dollar if you're looking at the commodity side it's specifically the metals right Copper, silver, gold, crude oil is going to trade a little bit. Crude oil is going to do what crude oil wants to do. Like, same thing with Bitcoin, right? Same, same thing. with Bitcoin and crude oil. They're not dollar dependent. They're not dollar, dollar dependent, dependent right now. No, not in any capacity. And so the ones that are dollar dependent are the silver, copper, gold side of the equation. And so I, I totally get the interest there. I totally get that desire, no doubt about that. I just think if that opportunity does manifest itself, it's not going to be on a V-shaped type situation moving into the future. And so let's allow resistance to play a role here. And if it does break out, we're going to be a little bit more patient on that pullback that's happening on the uh, metal side of the uh, commodity market. Yeah, listen, we're going to have continued conversations in depth, trades, analysis, helping our members with their trades. Traders Lounge, it's a great place to be. Go to TackleTrading.com, sign up for that 15-day free trial.